Hi there Booktube, it's Roz and it's the very beginning of July so time to do my June delights, discoveries, any disappointments. So I finished 13 books in June but before I talk about any of them I want to give a like a special mention, a special thank you to the two hosts of Ancients of Thon. That's the um, readathon to encourage us to read books before written before 1700. Um, and those are Jennifer and Tori. And yes, it, so two books that I'm not going to talk about because I didn't finish them. In fact, I'm going to be reading them for months, months to come. Um, but they gave me the extra sort of push to start both of those. And one of those is Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. And the other is Fencer's um, Spare... Spencer's Fairy Queen, not Fencer's Fairy Queen, <laughs> which I'm reading with Kate Howe and others. So um, thank you, Jennifer and Tori. But what about the 13 things I actually finished in, in June? Well, three of those were Booktube Prize books. So I'm going to wave them at you. OK, Inseparable by Simone de Beauvoir. Not a new book, but a new, um, newly available and translated how to Order the Universe, um, this is a Chilean book, um, by uh, Maria Jose Fer Ferrada, that's it. And finally, The Anomaly by Hervé Letellier, so French book. Now, um, and uh, I've tried to avoid giving you in my, exp in my um, expression any clues as to my opinions about that book, because that's not allowed under the rules of the Booktube Prize, but I'm really looking forward to um, telling you all about these in a wrap-up uh, that I'll do at the very end of July, just before the results come out, so that I can pop it pop it online um, when we're allowed to talk about our uh, semi-finals um, books and how we rank them. So that brings it down to 10 that I'm going to talk about, but there's another one I'm not going to, going to talk about, and that's The Hamlet by William Faulkner, and that's because that's part of Summer of Snopes. Our, um, instead of Sa Faulkner in August, we're, we're reading, um, a group of us are reading um, Faulkner Trilogy, the Snopes Trilogy, kind of all summer long, and I'll be doing uh, at least one other video about that specifically, so we'll, we'll leave that to one side. But if you're interested in The Hamlet, Codex Cantina have already done um, a video on the Hamlet as part of Summer of Snopes, so I'll point you in that direction. Now, so that leaves us with nine, and I have to say, it's interesting, this month has been slightly less stellar than some months reading I have, in that I've read quite a lot of books that I thought were really good books, but not quite top tier for me. Um, but don't let that put you off, because there's some in here that I think would be top tier, for other people, it's just my personal reaction to them. Um, in particular, the first book I'm going to talk about, which is This One Sky Day by Leonie Ross, and the last one I'm going to talk about, which is Another Country by um, James Baldwin. So let's get going. So, yeah, This One Sky Day. So um, it was uh, my choice for Caribbean. Um, Leonie Ross is a British Jamaican author. She's lived large parts of her life in both countries so she you know she's generally sort of shared between the two I suppose and this one sky day came out in 2021 and I wanted to read it because I've had so many um enthusiastic sort of reviews and comments about it and they were right they were right to um be that enthusiastic because it's a it's a really good book it's kind of fantasy of a sort but with a really sort of strong um Caribbean um, flavour, atmosphere, setting, you know, it's kind of a sort of alternative Jamaica maybe um, in the book and that is a really strong kind of element and a really enjoyable element of the book. Reviewers tend to use words like lush and extravagant, um, you know, when talking about this book. All fair, all fair. Also, why have I got a tiny... Oh, the other thing I would say is it's got loads of characters, you know, it's got like Loads of characters, loads of ideas, loads of images. That hence the lush and extravagant, I think. So what what was what was my slight hesitation about it? I think when it comes to fantasy, I always struggle just a little bit with the world building side of fantasy books. I know for some people that's their favourite part of, of fantasy, but it's not for me. And 
there was loads in this book, like some, some and some fantasy books, you kind of get the world building out of the way at the beginning and I could sort of grit my teeth and concentrate and get through it and then just enjoy the flow of the rest of the book. Ross kind of keeps adding to her world building and changing it and shifting it, it morphs and develops all the way through the novel, which is probably a strength. But because something about my brain, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get a grip on the world building, that that almost distracted me from enjoying the story. And what I should have done was just let it flow over me. So that would be my advice if you were reading this book. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Yes, just, just be fluid with it. One of the fluid things about the book that I found really interesting and was perhaps you know one of its most satisfying aspects for me was the way she writes about and uses fantasy to write about the sort of, I don't know, variety and scope and, and possibilities of human sexuality, human, human, human relationships, but in particular human sexual relationships. You know, she kind of goes all over the place in the book in a really rich way. And it was interesting that apparently she came, kind of came out as bisexual when she was talking about this book. I mean, I, you know, I'm sure you know, her friends already knew she was, but you know, she it wasn't something she talked about as a writer and she did in the context of, of this novel. Um, so it ended up being unexpectedly one of my Pride Month choices without me having known it was going to be. Pride Month brought me um, my absolute number one read of the month. Um, and that was one of the two collections of poetry that I read, both of which were sort of Pride Month choices. I'll talk about the one that wasn't the number one first. Um, which was this one, um, Blood, Bloodshot Monochrome by Patience Agbarbi. Now, this is, this is, just because it's not my number one doesn't mean this isn't a good collection of poetry. It came out in, I think, ooh, 2008? Let me check my notes. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, 2008. So it's n new but not brand new. Um, Agar Agbarbi is very sort of well-respected poet, particularly as a performance poet. Um, she's done a lot of sort of poetry and education and so on. She describes herself as bisexual and bicultural, which is interesting. And I think both her parents are Nigerian, but she the reason I think she describes herself as bicultural is because she was brought up um, like in a white foster family. And um, that really enriches her poems in an interesting way I think I mean she she draws on you know that in her in her poems there were some lovely sonnets in this 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 book it's it but it was patchy for me as a collection so hence not right up there there's also a load of sonnets in this book which was my or possibly my book of the month um it's Andrew Macmillan's Pandemonium and how to talk about this collection uh, without going a bit over the top. Macmillan writes poetry that is intensely emotional and raw and frank in those emotions, but he does that within a framework that is stylistically very tight. I mean, well, it's experimental, so, but very, he really works on the sort of style and shape and language of his poems in a way that I really appreciate as a reader of poetry. Um, it's quite, it's a book about mental health and it's a book about actually about his partner's kind of mental health crisis, I suppose, which is a, you know, brave thing to write about, isn't it? And he does it in a way that is um, quite robust. Um, yeah. I, I, if you read poetry, I can't recommend this collection highly enough. There you go. I'll stop there because I know most people don't read poetry, so there's no point in me going on about it, is there? Another book that I read that was quite brave and was about mental health was um, my sort of newest release that I read this this month, and that was I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Chewbacca, um, which um, is by Korean author... Um, like say see he and I re buddy read this with Katya um I'll link to her channel below I think we were sucked into reading this by the title what a great title isn't it just best title of the books I've read this month um Chibok is like a Korean street food snack if you if you're not familiar with Korean food I, I certainly have never eaten it as it happens not one 
doesn't seem to be one that turns up in restaurants here. This book was a bestseller in Korea, and that was another reason why Katya was aware of it and um, uh, suggested we read it. And I really enjoyed reading it with Katya, and it, it was a brave and, I think, honest book. It it did in a way it didn't do it for me um but that's because of my reading sort of the kinds of things i like to read so it's not a bad book it's just not my sort of book it has quite a lot of, uh, it be, it's built around transcripts transcripts of her um uh, sessions with the psychiatrist and then she sort of wraps bits around that and then does a sort of section of sort of reflections um on the end and I think some people, I can see why it was a bestseller, and I think some people will absolutely love it. If that's your sort of thing, grab it. If not, like me, give it a miss. Um, uh, yeah, that kind of introspection about self it doesn't always appeal to me. It does more in novels, in a way. You know, introspective novels appeal more than introspective um, non-fiction. There we go. Back to my Pride Month reading, and my next for my next sort of delight... Of, of 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 the month and discovery too in fact um which was um the graphic novel that i read britain and brew lightly by hannah berry now i say this was a discovery for me because i've never read anything by hannah berry before and um really enjoyed this it funny to call it a discovery because actually okay steve um my husband had a, a, a moan at me when I picked this up because I picked it up in the library and said, Oh, I fancy this one. And he said, But we've got that at home. I recommended it to you like years ago because Hannah Berry used to work in the same um, same building as him and it was sitting on our shelves all along. And he had told me I'd like it. And I just, because I didn't read graphic like comments then, uh, I ignored him. Silly me, because this was a lot of fun. So it's kind of like, um, it's got a kind of film noir quality, but yet slightly sort of, sort of dark, but also slightly funny. Um, I really loved the um, graphic style, you know, the style of, of, of the, the, the drawings in this book. It, they, it, it, it's a book that is predominantly about the pictures rather than words. I mean, there is text, but, you know, the balance between the two is really, I don't know, well balanced for me. And the thing that I love about them is, is they're almost like stills from a film. You know, you, you, she, you get things from, from different angles, I suppose. So that, you know, some of them you get like a big, big spread and, and, you know, there he is his window it's yeah i enjoyed the sort of strength of the of the design i suppose uh, hannah's queer author she um and i i read britain the main character in this book as as a gay man but it's sort of a bit irrelevant he's, he's like a he's like a private eye oh, oh, oh he and his his partner and um We'll try not to read any too much into this, but his partner in this book, Brew Lightly, turns out to actually be a tea bag. Um, won't go there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I really, I really loved it as a as a, a graphic novel experience. The story, illustration, uh, all of it came together for me. The other, the graphic non-fiction that I read this month was not a disappointment, but not one of those books this month that was good, but not as excellent as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and that was The Arab of the Future by um, Riyad Satouf. I don't have it any longer because I got it at the library. He, it's set in France and Libya and Syria. He's sort of a sort of half French, half Syrian um, Frenchman. He, he, it's a memoir of his childhood. And it's, politically and psychologically really interesting but it's quite I don't know it's quite a harsh book which is not necessarily a bad thing is it harsh in its graphic style harsh almost angry um almost aggressive in its in its quality I think he's trying to convey his father's character um and other tyrants like you know um Oh God, their names have gone out of my head. Libyan dictator um, Gaddafi and um, Syrian di dictator, father of the current one. Oh well, fill in, fill in the gaps for my post-COVID brain fog brain. Um, yeah, 
it's it's good I wouldn't not recommend it but I didn't love it if you know what I mean now this brings me to my next pride choice and something that was a surprise delight of the month okay not a five star book but definitely um a real pleasure and and a surprise which and I will explain why so that's um not before sundown um by um finnish author johanna sinisalo now i actually used it in a tag this uh, about a week ago about um my biggest surprise of of 2022 so far the mid-year book freak out tag it was a surprise because i was reading this as one of the um group that um, are reading lgbtq books in translation and other members of the group read this before me, some of them, and gave it a really negative kind of um, buzz of like being a bit like horrid or revolting or they couldn't wait to get rid of it or I don't know. And so I was all prepared to not enjoy it. And actually, I really liked it. It's a very intertextual book. The right down to the name of the book, Not Before Sundown, is a... Um, Finnish children's song and each of the um, uh, names of the section are like words, lines from the song. So a Finnish reader would 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 spot that. It and then it's full of bits that are taken from excerpts from real books and excerpts from pretend sources. But let me explain. It's a book about a man and a troll, and it takes that sort of Scandinavian folklore mythological creature the troll and sort of pretends that actually it turned out that trolls are real and you know somewhere at the beginning of the 20th century someone finally managed to um uh, you know hum one down and 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 examine the body and 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 you know along the lines of there's other creatures that people thought were perhaps um, mythical and have been sort of found in the 19th and 20th century people discovered they were real so it, it does that with the troll what she then does with that is use that to explore really to explore human nature I suppose and um, I, I suppose I, what I, the theme for me was that animals behave trolls too uh, being an animal um, in ways that can be bloody and um, violent or um, uh, uninhibited and that is in their nature as animals they're just you know doing what they do for re you know the reasons that they need to whereas human beings are knowingly cruel at times and knowingly wicked and knowingly greedy and and uh, yeah that was I thought the the what she's sort of exploring in the book and um except that then I suppose she goes that little bit further to think but actually do ha animals also have emotions and do trolls so um yeah a goodie I thought and actually some other people in the book have, have got a little bit have, in the group have read it now and and I wasn't the only one to enjoy it so I, I don't feel quite so perhaps quite so surprised as I did she kind of looks at, at human sexuality too, I suppose, in in the book. So it was a it was a good Pride Month choice, I think. Um, but maybe some people were expecting more of that. I don't know. Two more books that I absolutely, in the last two books I'm going to talk about, that I, I expected to be five star reads and were kind of nearly but not quite. Okay. One of those was um, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. Sheldrick, which was my non-fiction read of the month. I started it in June for um, Springathon and finished it in July. I absolutely love non-fiction books that are by people who are kind of expert in their subject, but also really enthusiastic and set out to share their enthusiasm with the general reader. And that's what Sheldrake does in this book. And it is a book where I, you know, it's changed my idea about Fungi completely. I, I have, a, he, he wants us to be, to realise that we undervalue and, and underestimate the significance of, of fungi in our world and in ecology and, you know, and, and their, their ubiquity around us and so on. And he absolutely succeeded in doing that. 
uh, if it wasn't quite up there as a sort of five star non-fiction book for me, it was because it, he, he, I felt it needed edited down a little bit. That he, 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 he's so enthusiastic. He almost be a bit too, a bit more detailed than I needed as a general reader. And at times it felt just a tiny bit repetitive. But I would still say, it's um, it, it, excellent, really enjoyable book, really interesting. I, eye opening is the word. For, 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 for that book. So last book of, of, of the video and last book of la last of my Pride Month um, books. And this, it's a bit more controversial, I think, to say that it was not a five star read for me because it was Another Country by James Baldwin. Um, it was published in 1961. Um, and I read it with uh, Mark Nash, Courtney Ferreter and uh, Zena uh, of Beating Around the Books. And the quality of Baldwin's writing is without question. I mean, you know, at the level of the line, at the level of the paragraph, it, he is second to none as a prose stylist. OK, so I, I just want to put that out there first. OK, and, and this is a book that I would say everyone should read. You know, when you really book and you're, you're maybe sharing it with other people, and you literally every other passage, you want to highlight it and, and remember it to, 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 to comment on it with them. You know, that good. OK. It's a book about a group of people in New York and in France in the 1950s, I guess. It's it's got um, eight main characters, two are black, Rufus and Ida, brother and sister, and six others are white. And they're sort of liberal creative types. OK, and they're, and they're all friends sort of or well there's one character is in France so he in and and hasn't met the others but apart from that they're all they're all they're all very much interconnected okay and this is a book about their relationships their their relationships as friends their relationships as lovers um there's yeah uh, that's the that's the the what he's exploring and I think um one how should I say? I think Baldwin has a view. In fact, he, he you know talks about it. He talks about it in interviews and essays and so on. That the the way um, American society has um, oppressed its black members has damaged and distorted the society as a whole in a way that that. Um, means that all uh, well has damaged white America as much as black America and that all relationships kind of almost ha happen in that context particularly biracial um, cross you know cross racial relationships but but uh, all um, um, the whole of American society and the whole and, and hence all American sort of sexuality and American um, uh, yeah interaction is shaped and I don't know distorted and polluted by that and I I understand his sort of reason for thinking that and, and wouldn't necessarily you know uh, it's not for me to argue with it but what that meant for me about this book is that I had a real problem with how he wrote writes about women in in this novel and I don't like you know, you know that I'm someone that likes to read books from different places and different times. And I, I always try really hard not to sort of put my 21st century values onto a writer from another place and time. But it was only 1961 that this book was published. And there's a sort of a, for me, a kind of a misogyny in this book that I found tricky. So that just slightly took the shine off it. That the way that he writes about insect I don't know, is it that he's writing how men of the time looked at women and is accurately representing that? Or is that how he thinks about women, I suppose, was 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 a constant question in my mind. And that that because I was going to that, that took some of my overall enjoyment of the book away. Um yeah, I suppose. I, do you know? I know what it is. It's because, because Baldwin was so clever and such a good writer and such an interesting thinker and so much at the forefront of kind of political awareness of his time. Um, 
it's almost like I expect more of him than I would of another writer publishing a book in 1961. So... Does that make any sense to you? You can feel free to shoot me down in flames. Okay, so that was my um, that was my month's reading in June. A really interesting month, let's say perhaps not a stellar one. And um, tell me about yours. <laughs>